in the very early 90s, my neighbor put me on his dirt bike and taught me how to shift gears and let me ride it around in the woods by our house. Um, I, I was immediately hooked. I just fell in love. Absolutely one of the most fun experiences I've ever had. I grew up in an EMS family and we weren't allowed to ride motorcycles. You know, my, my family had seen the the dangers and didn't want us anywhere near them, so I didn't ride for a long time after that. Later in the 90s, we moved to the uh, backside of the Tahuya State Forest. I had, again, neighbors with dirt bikes, and I started riding again. Went out and explored the forest extensively, and the Tahuya State Forest is such an amazing and beautiful place. I did that for a few years, just got on to other priorities. I started playing music, buying guitars, and learning to play, and, and eventually playing in bands. As I've gotten older, I've found that it's more difficult to shift my schedule, stay up late, and I still have to get up early and go to work in the morning. And when the pandemic hit, and everybody was stuck at home, there's nothing to do, we spent a year probably at home, and I found in that time I really wanted a new hobby, something that I could be passionate about and enjoy. One of my good friends mentioned dirt bikes, and I thought, oh, yeah. Yes, like I love dirt bikes, that would be so much fun. So I bought a couple of dirt bikes and we started riding the Tahiti State Forest again. It didn't take long for the adventure to feel pretty small. Put my bikes in the back of the truck every weekend and riding the same trails. Started feeling a stronger need for adventure. And that's when I started researching adventure bikes. And I started researching like what's what's a good lightweight bike? What's something I can actually take in the woods? Be maneuverable and manageable. That research eventually brought me to the KTM. I ended up buying a KTM 890 Adventure R. And I'm absolutely in love with it. I ride it every chance I get on the streets, on the trails, trying to find my next adventure. Without music, I really felt like I needed an artistic endeavor. So I bought cameras, and I bought a drone, and I started filming. And I didn't really know where that was going. I just started filming. Over the summer, I brought home two terabytes of footage, and then I had to figure out what to do with it. I picked up Adobe Premiere Pro and started learning how to use it. I watched YouTube videos, tried to figure it out. Here we are, I've got two terabytes of footage, I'm gonna start trying to edit that, put it out over the winter. Next summer, we'll start filming again. The other thing I realized in all of this was through the pandemic and sitting around at home, I had gotten very out of shape. Riding dirt bikes and riding the, the KTM over the summer, I lost 25 pounds. Next year, I'm going to do a BDR. I've got a lot of work to do. and I'm gonna start exercising really hard and eat a healthy diet. It's gonna be a fun winter. Glad to have you along. On my first ride out after buying my GoPros, I didn't really know how they work. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't have my film setting right. I didn't really know what I liked yet. I couldn't hear the GoPro beep in my ear when the battery went dead from the wind noise around my helmet. And so several times during that trip, I rode until the battery was completely dead and then I missed a bunch of footage. I got up into the middle of the Tahuya State Forest on Eppendall Pass and came face to face with a bobcat and he was standing just about 15, 20 feet off the road and I stopped and he just stared at me and it was such a cool experience being that close to him and just looking him right in the eyes. And then I rode off and I thought, man, that's amazing. I can't wait to look at the footage. Found a wide spot and pulled off and I didn't have it. The battery had died. That was a little depressing, but it was a lesson learned. The next day I decided to go again. Maybe I'll see something. The odds of having a moment like that two days in a row are pretty slim. The second day I had my GoPro. I took off back out into the Tahuya State Forest and rode and rode and rode and I, and I saw nothing. I was very frustrated that I had missed catching that bobcat on video. And eventually after being out for a few hours, I started heading home. Made it back to my hometown and I was just getting ready to make that final stretch and I thought, what if I turned right here instead? What if I just turned right? Like, I'm not done. And so I did. Got to the next stop sign, turned right, and I rode about a half a mile. A bear ran out in front of me and then ran up the road beside me. And I went back and listened to the footage because I thought I must have yelled out. Like I must have been said, woohoo, or something. Like it was so exciting to have this little black bear run out in front of me and then, and then head down the road beside me. And I had just changed my battery, so I knew I had it. I knew I had him on film. All I was, I was just hoping that the camera settings were good enough to catch it. And, uh, and I got home and they were.